Welcome to the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup Week 16 Highlight Show. This is the final week from the first round of the competition. We will complete our lineup for the second stage. Eddie Barker was due to be playing with Dylan Leary, but because of illness, Eddie Barker has had to pull out. He will be replaced by Matt Cook. And likewise, Simon Fitzsimmons was due to be playing with David McNamara. David McNamara cannot make it. He will be replaced by Connor Jones. And then we have the Welsh pairing of Richard Gifford and Andy Williams. And Steve Morris and Jella Singh complete the lineup. On to our first match then, and it is Dylan Leary and Matt Cook taking on the Welsh pairing of Rich Gifford and Andy Williams, and we join them in the opening frame. Matt Cook and Dylan Leary to kick it off as Matt Cook absolutely launches that break. And uh, as ever, first frame of the night, we'll bring our new viewers up to speed if this is the first time you're watching the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup. You're watching English 8-ball. Pot your colours. Pot the 8-ball. Win the frame. It's a race to four for each match. Or 20 minutes on the match clock, whichever comes first. We'll take the result at 20 minutes if neither pair has got to four. The first frame will be scotch doubles, which means alternate shots. And then we'll have singles frames, where each player plays each other in singles. Followed by the fourth frame, which will be a scotch. Two singles and a potential deciding seventh frame which will be scotch doubles We've got four pairs tonight they'll all play each other in a round robin format and at the end of the night we will decide who goes through by who is top of the league table if there are two or more pairs tied on points we will go to a six red shootout to decide who qualifies right now it's a good start from matt and dylan you might be wondering what happened with that first shot is that uh, Dylan played a, a really nice red, potted the yellow at the same time, just to open at the top of the table. As long as you pot your own ball first, that you nominate. You would have told referee Orich Tesgill what he was going for. And he's absolutely fine to continue. And uh, the work being done pretty well on reds here. The obvious concern appears to be the eight ball, but they don't appear too concerned by it, which suggests to me a plan. It's always a problem when the tricky ball on the table is the eight ball and you have to leave it so late. I, th I thought I knew the plan up until that shot, but I'm not sure what the plan is anymore. No, I've, I'm not sure at all. I mean, the double's not there. The yellow's in the way. I'm wondering whether they could go top of the table now and bump the yellow out the way. But probably, it's, I mean, that's maybe what Dylan's saying, but that's not easy to do because you're knocking it towards the pocket. You're not knocking it out the way. So it's not guaranteed to knock it out. Ordinarily, I wouldn't suggest this, but just because we saw one last week on the Masters, which is one of my favourite shots of of the year so far. Lovely shot that from Matt Cook. If it drops and it does, brilliant. That really is brilliant. And that's such a good shot. So it opens the pocket up for the double. If it was not, I wondered if we were going to see a kick shot like we saw in the Masters last week, cushion first. One of the most spectacular shots of the year. That would have been an option if they didn't get rid of that yellow. But now you drop it in and you've, it's all about the double. It's actually... A really nicely worked out finish if it goes, but it does need to go. Yeah, heart of the pocket. That's lovely. Really, really nice from the boys that. Super finish. Really nice out. Statement finish, isn't it? We're here to play. That really was very nice indeed. Rich Gifford made it 1-1 with a break clearance. His partner, Andy Williams, is at the table with a tricky chance in frame three. After back-to-back -back break clearances, this frame looks like it holds quite a bit of a key in this opening match now.
just looking at it, if that yellow doesn't go through the gap, and I don't think it does. Yeah, then it you, doesn't, does it? Surely. No, you can either play it off the eight ball, well, that's a delicate and horrible shot, or you come down and leave it as a double. But if you come down and leave it as a double last ball and you land awkward, I mean, that's tight, isn't it? I, 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 got I don't think it goes past the red. I think I it goes don't. past the eight, but I don't think it goes past the red into the corner. I think it fits through the gap, but it doesn't. that gap doesn't get you to the, the pocket. No. So I think, I think he's going to have to do something different with it. But if you come down for the double and you don't land nicely on it, then the cue ball's, you know, for example, let's say you finish a little bit short, then the cue ball's got to play around with the red and the eight ball to get onto the eight ball. So I don't really like the options there. And he's not on the next ball here. He needed to flick that red on the way down the table. So he's he may be forced into playing this yellow off the eight ball. Just a really delicate little flick. But I mean the chat I mean that's so I mean this is super long odds. Yeah, this is very, very difficult. Oh, that's brilliant. That's that such is a good absolutely shot. brilliant. I can't tell you, I mean, you could play that a lot of times and not get close and look silly. Because it's so delicate, it almost, it almost doesn't look like much, but that's the beauty of it. That's such a difficult shot Andy Williams has just played there. That's not a bad bit of queuing either. He's he's in shape to get out here. He's still going to play a couple of really good shots, but this would be some out. It would be a, a brilliant out from where he was two shots ago. I think he's straight enough on this yellow to the bottom left corner that he, all he has to do is roll it in, let the cue ball go through one or two rolls, and you've got a thin clip on the yellow with space to get on the eight ball. Exactly that. How would you like this for a start? Looks like we're playing no mercy pool tonight. If he gets out here, it's the best of the lot of them, though. Well, what a clearance this will be from Andy Williams. Yeah, that's an ultimate pool pro level clearance from Andy Williams. Leary and Cook responded by winning the Scotch doubles frame. Dylan is now at the table in trouble with the clock running out. Yeah, Dylan's got a problem here because he's got to find a way to hide this cue ball. And, and he's four ball snookered. And that yellow at the top might sneak into the right half of the pocket as well. I think it does. Yeah. He was taking that on, I think. But with an eye to sort of hiding the cue ball. What's he left? Oh, there's a gap. Look at this gap. Oh, it's tight. It's on. Yeah, it is. Just into the right side of the pocket. If it doesn't go, he could play cushion off the red yeah. and open it up right now while staying on the other one at the bottom of the table. Yeah, great call. That's got to be the shot. And it is. Brilliant. Executed well. Left a good angle. Richard Gifford looks happy. Make a case for going into the red just above the, not the one directly above the eight ball, the next one, that's the one, yeah. But you needed to catch it a little bit fuller rather than on the left-hand side. You could have played the gap and then you'd have to play precise on the next one, but I was thinking if he catches that on the right-hand side, at least he opens up the eight ball, but you'd still have to swing it around two cushions to get on the eight ball, so I guess maybe the gap was better. Oh, 20, 20 seconds. 20 seconds, Dylan. Oh, it's not on, is it? We thought this before. But I don't think so. This would be the most ridiculous clearance ever. He won't be a million miles off it, which will annoy him. Decent effort, that, from Dylan Leary. Yes, the quadruple. But alas, it falls just short. Andy Williams just doing enough not to lose the match, but he couldn't quite win it in the end. On to our second match, then. Simon Fitzsimmons and Connor Jones taking on Steve Morris and Jella Singh. We're going to join him halfway through the opening frame. Connor Jones is at the table, but snookered on the eight ball. Connor will get good, solid contact on this, and who knows what's going to happen from here. Well, he should have got good, solid contact. He's hit a gap that he didn't think was there, to be honest. <laughs> and the good news is here for Steve Morris and Jealous Singh. Cue ball in hand. They can put wherever they want. For me, I think you put the one on the left rail first. Yeah, that's it. 
and you've got the one over the right centre to absolutely guarantee you perfect position on the eight ball. This is actually a dot to dot finish. It's a confidence booster. Just do your work. <laughs> Likes its feet a little bit. Halloween yeah. might have been and gone, but that was a bit of a spooky pop from <laughs> Jellicing. Yeah, he's not not left the best of angles. This is just going away from your work here. So, yeah. Oh, no. Have they got away with it? They don't deserve no. to. I think they might have. It's close. No, uh, they're fine. Simon's on the double here, and Simon's very good at doubles. You fancy him to make this one. Yeah, it's there. It is there. The bouncer gets the first frame on the boards. Steve Morris won frame two, and we join his partner, Jella Singh, with ball in hand against Connor Jones. Yeah, Connor's just been a bit off the boil so far tonight. A couple of loose shots from him, and obviously Simon didn't make the finish in the previous frame, so neither on it yet. That's better from Jella. Similar shot that he played in the first frame, except this time, I believe he's got the snooker off the loss of turn. Don't think Connor can see it flat. No, he can't. Plays one cushion. And right, now then, Jella, you've got to go. Exactly That's that. Good chance. There's no no benefit in waiting here. I don't. It doesn't get better than this. Getting a a snooker or cue ball in hand is not going to help you in any way. Oh, and by the way, Jeller, it's 15 seconds. <laughs> mate, crack on. Yeah. That was a nervy one. Nearly missed it. Looked like he was trying to pot it on the straight side to hold the cue ball, but could have gone up the table and, and dealt with those first and then come down. Well, any player will tell you, any player, any top player will tell you, you don't settle until you've won your first frame. And Jella's not done that yet, and he's a little bit shaky at the time he has been at the table. How about this for Connor Jones? This is a big shot. Oh, he had it. He had it, just needed hitting. He, co he connected with it perfectly, just needed to hit the ball. I think his, in his mind he's played the loss of turn rather than the combination shot, but that wasn't far away from making both. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a clever shot. Well, yes and no. He's put himself under huge pressure for his next pot here. And he's left a big pocket to the top right, so he's got to be really careful. Oh, unlucky. The shot he played initially, if, I mean, if he was playing, it was... I think it was just an out and out safety that didn't really work, to be honest with you, because that was making that ball, leaving that ball down there was always going to put himself under huge pressure. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of giving, giving our underdogs <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. Go for it. Connor Jones is just going to work the clock a little bit. I think it may be a bit early for that. 2.49 left. Oh, use the extension just to use it and then end up with over 15 seconds left on the shot clock. So, wait, you mind up, Connor? Yeah, I mean, Christy Colfield and, and Connor Tracy there, you know, they'll be the... Well, just wait for the eight ball to stop moving. They'll be the outsiders of that group, but not by much. Yeah. I mean, it's I it's mean, a another tough group to call. They are dark, dark horses oh, yeah. there, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. They're not without their chances of coming through. They'll fancy the job, that's for sure. chance for um, the, the bouncer and Connor here to uh, ice this match really they can make this clearance and it's on just the two on the right hand side there obviously the yellow at the top is tricky to get good position on but it's the two on the right hand side that are going to cause the biggest headache and I wonder whether there was enough showing if he could have come back a fraction further he might have been able to pot it going to draw back Okay, that's not gone to plan. Okay, it slowed him down completely, but I think he was trying to get the yellow to sit half in front of the red so that the yellow would still go and they could take on the clearance next visit. Now Simon and, and Connor might have to do what doesn't come naturally to them and try and slow this match down for a minute 30, try and stop the clearance from happening. Connor looks a little bit frazzled on this shot clock, it must be said. Now then. 
Hal, then Chandler and Steve. Could you do something a bit special? 80 seconds with which to work. Oh, he was trying to play on the plant to the top right, I think. Trying to hit the gap, and that would have been a really tough shot, but would have been a way of dealing with that red. Maybe they were thinking about opening up that pocket so it goes bottom right, but you weren't going to be on a ball, so difficult. Almost a treble, but that surely, it should at least, be their last shot in the match because Simon Fitzsimmons and Connor Jones here don't have to worry about clearing up. They just have to keep Morrison Singh off the table. They can do that by potting open balls, of which they have a couple. You can see the clock being utilised. It's good work. Slurs I've ever seen Simon Fitzsimmons play this. Chalk in the queue on 15 seconds. Connor can just go and uh, sit down. He doesn't need to play the next shot. Yeah, that'll do it. It's going to be a win then for Simon Fitzsimmons and Connor Jones. Steve Morris and Jella Singh took them all the way in that match, though, and it might be a case of when they watch it back, just thinking, oh, what if? They had their moments in that match, they couldn't quite seize them, and Connor and Simon get over the line. Morrison and Singer straight back in action and have the break against Gifford and Williams. But, Simon, I think you think it should have done. They had their chances, didn't they? I think that'll be the thing that disappoints them. When you're playing great players, you know, Simon certainly is that. Connor's on, you know, didn't have his best game. I don't think Simon had his best game, but, they had their opportunities to beat them and they didn't take them. Sometimes you play against players at that level and, and you don't get your opportunities, but when you do, you've got to do more than they did. And there was a couple of frames there. They just let get away, you know, the 2-1 loss instead of probably a 2-1 win. It's a big difference. And the problem for them is they're straight back on without any real time to digest what happened. And you have to say a lot of it could come down to the fact they're you know, the, the edginess, the nerviness, especially for, for Jela Singh, playing on this stage for the first time. Yeah. I really do feel like that's showing, and another opportunity comes and goes immediately at the start of this match. Yeah, it was noticeable, wasn't it? It really was, and it's worth pointing out as well, it was totally understandable. Oh, yeah, I'm not... Yeah, that, that's it's not easy out there. It really is a, a difficult place to play your best stuff. Be a really ruthless place to be. Now one key ball here. Can they land on it? The one, there's one just above the yellow, the one nearest the eight ball, really. There's not much room to land on it, but there's even less room to, to play onto your next ball afterwards. They won't have a good angle on it when they do play onto it. I wonder, I quite like the drop this in sort of dead weight make sure you keep a red over the pocket so that when you pop the next one you've got balls to play on yeah that's okay so I think they're on the one to the left center now if the cue ball sort of slide through the gap they might have a gap to the one to the bottom right if it hits the yellow four ball they've got a thin clip to the middle and then they can get out from there options Are plenty, really. I'm having a little bit of a chat. Which way do they want to go about this? They have got the gap. They can play the one over the pocket. They could go up to the top left first, or they could thin clip this off the yellow, control it around that way. I sort of like this if the eight ball goes right center. Definitely goes bottom left corner and they can play on it to that pocket. The only reason I was saying right centre is the fact that if they landed a little bit straight, they could just top through for right centre, but they've got the angle just to be able to play same pocket here. Really nicely worked out finish this. Really like this. A very classy visit to the table. I think Andy's got that in the locker, hasn't he? Yeah. He's, he's a classy player, really. And, uh... The next two frames were shared. Andy Williams has the break in frame four. 2-1 the score. 4.53 on the clock. 
Huge explosion. I mean, that's some break. Oh, you need a red here. Don't, well, I say you need a red. If that Does that yellow squeeze in off the red to the bottom right? I think it might do, you know. Yeah, and if it does, I think you want yellows here, don't you? Reds are a little bit messy. Well, there's one bad red. I mean, they all look bad because they're all clustered together, but I think the three ball plant's on, so I think you could make a case for reds. But if that yellow goes bottom right, then I do like yellows. The eight ball's the big problem. Two together aren't set as a plant. They may be set to the left centre, but that's not ideal. So you're looking at one of those top right corner, or you may be even top left looking at those. Did he try and move the eight ball there? I think he might have done. Well, 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 boys, we're in trouble here, aren't we? I mean, you couldn't have picked a worse place for that cue ball to land. I like that. Get that yellow in amongst those reds and start playing the clock. You're not, there's no finish. They, they left themselves with nothing to really do, so let's make it as hard as possible for reds. There's got to be thinking there. and I think that's a pretty good effort, you know. It's come out really well for them. OK, you know, you can argue they're behind in a potential tactical exchange here, but they don't need to win the frame. They just need to not lose it. And I still I, I wouldn't be thinking aggressive again here if I'm Andy. I'm thinking keep it tight. But I think he's going to pop this and go. I think you couldn't pay me to take these on. No, I, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it because of where the eight ball is, and I don't like it even if they left an angle to develop the, the yellow on the bottom right. That's risky. That's Because look at that, it's just opened up the reds. That was a risky effort. It's a, it's a lovely shot, but it, these need to go now. That's the pressure. That's the, uh, the rod they've made. And if this goes, yeah, they've left the perfect angle now here to develop the eight ball. They could do it two ways. You can either open up the bottom right-hand corner or go into the eight ball. Well, they open up the bottom right-hand corner, so potentially a big eight ball coming up. They've just got to get themselves there. Ooh, 2.28 remaining. Oh, that's OK. That's OK. Got to be careful because they're going into the eight ball now. Ooh, off angle. And yeah, wrong angle. Just drop it in, leave a shot on it. Or come back for perfect position. What Beautiful shot. shot. That is. Beautiful. Stevie Morris, some shot there. All right, Jellet. All on this. Two minute warning. Yes. Two apiece. Jella and Steve win that frame. Don't lose it. Don't give it to them. Okay, they still had to make a yeah, nice, just don't nice make eight it easy. Don't Yeah, give don't make anything. it easy. Yeah. Oh, what a time to hit your best break of the night. Well. Oh, well, the confidence. 140. Yeah, the confidence is building for Jella here, and he's got a great chance. These reds deserve to go after that break. And he doesn't even have to rush, just has to move smoothly through them here. Steve Morris is but a spectator. Oh, that's a nice, a couple of really nice positional shots here. Deal with those two at the bottom. Yeah, this is nice. Ooh, I say that, is he? He's okay. He's, he's, fine, he's, fine, he's, he's fine. okay. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. We're okay. This may have been my uh, last ball. I may well have wanted to leave that one just to drift down for the eight ball, but it's not, not the worst. There's plenty of room to get down for that eight ball. Oh, I like this. Sit, sit, sit. Just. Just gone a smidge too far, but yeah, if he drops the red in, yeah, guaranteed to leave the angle that the cue ball's drifting down the table. Oh, no. Well, he I lined it up and then didn't do it. Yeah, and it, I think he tried to stun into the yellow to leave the cue ball next to the yellow, and in the end just overhit it. I, for me, it's you drop it in as almost like a drag shot. Oh, this is tough. 33 seconds, has he at least ensured the win? Oh! Well, he will have done now. Wow. I was going to say ensured the draw, but how about a win? What a double. It's for 3-2. Jealous Singh. How about that?
needs the eight ball to salvage something. Throws his arm through it. Hits a monster break, but no eight ball, and that will do it. The irony being, if he had uh, had maybe a minute there, he'd have fancied himself on those, but what a win. Steve Morris and Jella Singh are not done just yet. On to match four, Cook and Leary at the table. But yeah, yellows look solvable. I think you're right, that yellow into the right middle off the reds, and all of a sudden the middle pocket's opened up for the eight ball. That's good. What are reds looking at here? Well, hello. What a shot that is from Matt Cook. All of a sudden, reds open up. Well, Simon Fitzsimmons and Connor Jones were not expecting that. Brilliant double. Yeah, some shot that, and now these reds look wide open. And Simon will tell you that's why he doesn't play safeties. Yeah. Yeah, chatting through it. These two know they their games really well, but Dylan clearly being the, the captain of the group. key positional shots coming up here when you come down for the one at the bottom of the table if you leave it last ball you just want to come down in such a way where you're not going to allow that yellow to become a problem because I think if you hit the yellow to the left of it so if you finish high on it that yellow gets into play then you could end up snookering yourself with the yellow nearest the eight ball could go either way here you could take the one at the bottom of the table but then you could leave a potentially tricky ball at the top but it gets away from not snookering yourself on the eight ball so now he's got to make sure he comes back far enough that's not ideal that, that really isn't an ideal angle at all I think you're going to force this haven't you it doesn't look natural looks horrible I think that you have to, if you just rolled this one in, you, your natural line goes up the middle of the table, but the minute you try and play it with enough pace to go past the yellow, you're going to flick the, the yellow at the bottom. Mm. Oh, it's okay. He just missed it, which is really well worked out, really well done. Yeah, what do we know? Yeah. Matt Cook played it perfectly. There's a lot to happen between now and then. You will say for, for Simon and Connor, if they win this match, they're in control of the night. If Dylan and Matt win this one, then they're at least in control of their own destiny in terms of their worst way. They win the last match, they could be in a six red shootout. So essentially they're both in control of their own destiny, which is where they want to be right now. Dry break from Dylan. Awkward layout here, but a doable layout for Simon. Could go both ways. Looks like he fancies the reds. Every red has a pocket. Eight ball goes. So this is actually not too bad at all. I wonder, can he just drop this one in enough to play on the one on the cushion that's what he's tried to do and he is on it but it's a little bit close to his work best shot because he got close to his work a little bit of angle he tried to come twice across but flick the yellow 
So cue ball in hand here for Dylan. And he'll be very happy to get it because all the yellows go as well. Actually fairly natural connections between all of these. If he picks a good route. Okay. I, I think a draw is what Williams and Gifford are after here. Yeah, that's, that's as I worked it out. Yeah, I thought the same thing. But they need two draws, I think. They need this one and, and another match to be a draw, win their final game. They can only get to three points. I think they're in a situation where they need a four-way six-red shootout. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how I have it. Not outside of the realms of possibility, I don't think. Although it does they, look... They need, in fact, I think they may need uh, Cook and Leary to win this one and lose their final match. Yeah, that's right, because they're playing... Jella and Steve in their final match who would yes. need to win to get to the three points. Yeah, that's you're absolutely right. Yeah, so Gifford and Williams now are big Cook and Leary fans. Yeah. I think any other result might just put uh, Gifford and Williams out. Because if Fitzsimmons and Jones win, then they're up to four. Yeah, and Andy, the, Andy and Richard gone. Yeah. yeah, completely, completely agree with that. And the same would apply to, to Jella and Steve because they could only get to three as well. So, yeah, Fitzsimmons and, and Jones win would, would do that, but they look like they're on the verge of going 2 0 down. Jella and Steve can get to four. They won the last match. I've got lost. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Who's oh, oh, is there? It's fine. No, you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Matt Cook made it 3-0 with a reverse clearance. Jones and Fitzsimmons did respond by winning the fourth frame, but the clock ran out in the fifth, giving Cook and Leary the win and putting them in control of this group. Jones and Fitzsimmons were straight back in action and quickly 2-0 down to Gifford and Williams. helps red goes bottom right so he's looking at you can drift down for that one now he'll want to be on an angle on it that he can then deal with the other red at the bottom he's deciding to go away from it straight away come back down for it in a minute well, he's got a plan a side fits So he's also got a little bit of mileage when he comes down for that ball. So you can see where he wants to get to, and he may leave them for his last two balls, the red to the bottom. But if he comes down the left-hand side of the table, if he gets the perfect angle, he can do what he wants to do in terms of developing that red or trying to bump into the yellow might be the order of the day. If he doesn't, he can use the yellow on the right-hand side, the nearest the right-hand side pocket, uh, right-hand corner pocket, I should say, to then create the angle he wants. So there's a little bit more margin of error than it, it looks. But it's still not huge, it's still very tough. Yeah, let's not get it twisted. This is this is difficult. How good's the angle? I think he's absolutely plumb straight. This is where he could use the yellow, so that if he plays off the yellow, he, he, the cue ball tops into the, the yellow in the middle of the bottom cushion. Oh, he could get there playing it plain. That's a lovely shot. The one before was the better one, though, yeah. to land. Absolutely perfect. That was really nice. That was like cue ball in hand sort of perfect, wasn't it? Great stuff from Cy Fitz. 
showing his class in this visit. OK, he's come up too far up the table here, but he's still got room. Classy, classy operator is the bouncer. Oh, and he's showing it. A brilliant shot. Brilliant visit. That was not easy. That really was not easy. He's made it look very, very simple. And he finishes the job. Fitzsimmons and Jones also won the next frame to tie the scores up. That's why Simon Abacus Webb is right next to me. <laughs> Good turnaround though from two 0 down. They were looking a little bit, a uh, little bit dark. Oh. Gone rain! Yes! <laughs> oh wow! How about that for a turnaround? What a turnaround! <laughs> Unbelievable! And he's been looking for this all night, as Connor Jones. I reckon we'll get a bit of a celebration here. He wanted it, and he got it. He actually looked more emotional when he didn't get one. <laughs> I was just waiting for the big reaction. He saw it early and then no reaction at all. But that is a huge turnaround from 2-0 down to 3-2 very quickly indeed. Golden break obviously helps that. Victory was wrapped up in the next frame to give the English duo some hope. We'll keep them in the night. For Cook and Leary, it will qualify them. They have the night in their own hands. If they draw, it will be Dylan Leary and Matt Cook in a six red shootout with Simon Fitzsimmons and Connor Jones. And if Morris and Singh win, it's a six red shootout with Simon Fitzsimmons and Connor Jones. Have, have I got that correct, Si? Yeah. Uh, halfway First time in the night. Get ha in. Halfway through, I thought you were going to go wrong, but you did get it right. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So at the moment, Cook and Leary are exactly where they want to be qualification in their own hands but we know from everybody that's been in this situation before there's a strange pressure on this well it's so much is still live any results causes drama two of the results cause the six red shoots out so much to play here for all four men out in the arena Dylan Leary and Matt Cook have got first go at this one Dylan's in the zone he's wired That was a lovely little touch. Just moving the red enough to make it pass to the right centre pocket. Still the red by the eight ball for me. I don't think that squeezes into the bottom right hand corner. I can't see how it can squeeze past that yellow. Yeah, I don't think you can. We, we do don't get think you can swing it off the jaws or anything yeah, like that. We, we do get fooled, but there is room to get onto it in other pockets, but it uh, still needs to be played onto. Obviously, does go bottom left as well, but difficult to get onto it into that pocket. It's not a brilliant angle. I think Dylan may have to just pull it back or take it now, pull it back to be just short of where it is now, or almost exactly where it is now, that line to the top right corner. Does he try and do anything more adventurous than that? Well, he could go past the yellow, take it to the left centre. The problem with that, he's come too far. Natural angle now tracks level with the eight ball across the middle of the table. Therefore, he has to play a really good shot to get above the eight ball to the bottom right-hand corner. So, double it is. Here we go. Pressure shot. Bang. Keep the noses in front of draw, still keeps them in the night. Immediately a chance here in frame two for Dylan Leary. Not a 
huge amount of power there for Jella Singh. He comes across it a little bit, and you can tell that see the spots on the cue ball are always spinning quite a bit. It's been like that all night for him on his break. Doesn't quite have the same power as some of the other players as well. So he does need to get that quality of contact right. On this occasion, he doesn't. Reds is the choice. All the reds are good. It's just the eight ball that are, isn't. Can he play a delicate red off yellow into the right centre pocket and then the eight ball opens up for that same pocket? Or is he put it straight and develop it that way? He plays the first choice and he plays it really well. Also now goes bottom right hand corner, which may be a pocket for him. Interested to know when he takes the one over right centre. If he leaves it straight in, as in gets back to where he is now, it's a good last ball. Well, I think he's going to have to now. But if he leaves it from high, so somewhere near the break line, then he's got to pick a path through the gap to get onto the eight ball and into the middle pocket. So a slightly tougher shot. Which I think he may have to do from this angle. Yeah. Could go wrong. It could, yeah. He does have a decent sized window, though. Yeah, I was just about to say this could go wrong, but these are the sorts of shots that Dylan's been making all night. He's been pretty consistent. And that's pretty perfect. He has been good tonight, Dylan Leary. Been really impressed. He's played really well, looked really sharp. Cook and Leary made it 3-0 in the next frame and wrapped it up with a comfortable 4-0 victory. That completes the victory in the group as well, puts them through to the second stage of Ultimate Pool, the Pairs Cup.